Number 27, the heart rate of a random sample of people is approximately normally distributed, which means we can use the z-score chart. The mean heart rate is 73 beats per minute, per minute, I think they mean minute, and the standard deviation is 6 beats per minute. Well, range of heart rates contains the 95 closest, 95 percent closest to the mean. Okay, so what this means then is that I need to figure out if I want 95 percent of the data. Well, 95 percent is kind of a key percentage, and they said that that key percentage has to be around the mean. So what this means is that I'm exactly two standard deviations away from the mean okay that is 95 percent this is called the empirical rule and i will let you know on the test it will not be 95 percent it will be another percentage so do keep in mind that the empirical rule these percentages are going to be very important and i'm going to ask you a few questions on this not just one okay so just um write that on your note card the empirical rule is very very important Okay, so if I'm going to go here, okay, I know that this is 73 beats per minute. So if I need two standard deviations, that would be like adding 12, right? I need two of those. So one standard deviation, two. So that is going to be 85, okay? And then if I'm going to go 12 behind the mean, I'd have to go 73 minus 12, which is going to give me 61, okay? So this means that 95% of my data is going to fall between 61 and 85 beats per minute, okay? So if this happens, um, I, what would you call that? You would call that, you know, most people have this as their beats per minute, right? Their heart rate, okay? All right, 28, 28 is actually uh, here. So Hannah said the percentage of all values of a normal distribution with Z greater than or equal to 1.05 is 85.31%. Describe and correct Hannah's error. Okay, now already, um, if I'm dealing with greater than 1.05, okay, this is 28, um, that's positive, okay, so one standard deviation away. Okay, if I'm about one standard deviation away, I can already tell that there's no way that that's 85%. So let's look at, <clears throat> let's look at positive, because I, I think I got a feeling of what her error is. So I'm going to go to zero, one point, uh, zero, uh, one point, uh, 1.05, 1.05, right there. Okay, so 8531, is that what she said? 8531, yep, okay, so that's what she did. She messed up the table. She thought that um, this was greater than, and it's not, it's less than. Okay, so to correct the error, what we need to do is actually do 1 minus 0 0.8531. Uh, okay, and then that's how we can find that this is about 1 uh four six nine okay so it's actually about almost 15 percent it's the inverse of that okay so that's what she did she looked at and confused a right table a right tail value with a left tail value okay so there, here's another way you could have corrected the error she could have just went like this okay if that's what she meant so both are corrections depending on the situation Okay, so 29. Uh, there will be a couple of these on the test. Suppose travel times of employees at a company are normally distributed, okay, with a mean travel time of 18 minutes and standard deviation of 3.25 minutes. What portion of the employees have a travel time between these two values? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, since this is normally distributed, I can actually find out how, um, how rare it is to get this one and how rare it is to get this one and then where they overlap is actually the, that complete probability between both windows okay or i should say the one window okay so let's take a look at this i'm going to rewrite the numbers give myself some space here let's calculate the z score for the 
uh, the right hand side of the actual um, value here. So I've got um, uh, the right hand side of the actual window. Okay, so I have the mean at 18. I have the standard deviation of 3.25. Okay, and uh, let's see. Okay, all right, so here we go. The Z score. Now I want to know in between the probability, I'm kind of writing a little sloppy here. Um, what is the probability of being in between these values? Okay, and let's put an X there. 22.25. Okay, a little sloppy there. But I want to know what is the probability of selecting a, a person at random if they fall in between this these travel times, okay? So let's calculate the Z-score of uh, 22.5. Okay, so the Z-score of 22.5. What is this? It's like a bump in my desk. It's super annoying. Uh, 22.5. 22.5 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay. And that gives me a Z score, which I am about to calculate. Uh, 22.5 minus 18. Exactly right. Yep. And then we're going to divide by that standard deviation of. 3.25. Okay, so it looks like we got a z-score of 1.38. Okay. All right, now let's get, that means that I am 1.38 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, 22.5 is above the mean. Okay, so that's that. Now here's the next z-score. The next z-score is for 14.75. So let's figure that out. 14.75 minus the mean which should take us on the, the, to the left-hand side of it. So it better be negative. So 14.75 minus 18 equals that, divided by 3.25. I get negative one, exactly negative one. We are exactly negative one standard deviations um, on that side. So what we are looking for is this. We want something that has positive 1.38 and then negative one and we want the probability of if we selected one commuter right commuter travel time of employees we just grab one what's the probability that they're going to land in between uh this these two these two times these two times so let's go ahead and figure that out what is the probability of 1.38 well we got to look at the table and we're going to look at the negative version. A um, positive version, 1.38, is right here. That is 0.9162. Okay, so 0.9162. Now that is all of this, including this area here. And I don't want this area. I want to get rid of this area so I can get the highlighted shaded version. So I got to subtract this little chunk right here. So now I look at uh, negative one. What does it mean to have negative 1.0 standard deviations? It is 0 0.1587, 0 0.1587. Subtract those two, uh, 0.9162 minus 0.1587. I've got 75.75%. Okay, which is one point, or seventy-five point eight percent. All right, and if we, and if you look at this, yeah, that's it's about three quarters. Okay, about three quarters of any commuter is going to fall between that particular percentage. All right.